and welcome to Covent Garden in the heart of London's West End. Looking down on this grand piazza from up there on the roof terrace of the Royal Opera House, three artists are currently tuning up for their very own gala performance. So, who will put the art in Traviata? Who will orchestrate a win? Who's worth putting a tenor on? It's the grand final of Landscape Artist of the Year. Over 2,000 hopefuls applied for this year's competition but just 48 gifted artists were chosen to take part. I'm feeling really great. <laughs> Does that sound convincing? Confronted by some of the country's most spectacular views and cheered on by enthusiastic crowds... Success! <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> they've conducted themselves with dignity and skill, despite everything the British summer could throw at them. I think I might just go and jump in the river because I am fading fast. <laughs> At the end of it all, three artists stand centre stage. Monica Popham. <laughs> Denise Fisk. <laughs> Christina Chan. Now in the heart of London's glittering West End, it's time for them to face the music. I'm a bit stressed, to be honest. There's so many buildings to choose from, it's just trying to pick the right one. Our artists are one painting away from an incredible prize, a £10,000 commission for the Science Museum, for which they'll travel to the stunning landscape of Orkney to depict its vital role in the sustainable energy revolution. But it's not just today's paintings they'll be judged on. There are also the commissions, landscapes our artists have completed in their own time. To win, as always, they'll need to strike a chord with our three judges. They are this close to not just maybe making an incredible artwork, but to changing their lives. So take your seats. The show's about to start. The winner of Landscape Artist of the Year is... On a rainy afternoon at London's Royal Opera House, three artists are facing the final curtain. From Gibraltar, Monica Popham. Canadian Christina Chan. And Denise Fisk from East Sussex. To be in the final, it's a huge boost to my confidence that the judges really believe in my work and that is just the best feeling. I can't even fathom winning. It doesn't, it doesn't feel real to be here right now, so to even win it would just be, it'd be incredible, yeah. <laughs> it's unreal being here at the final. Everything's going through my head right now. It's really bizarre, actually. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, look at that. Oh, my God. Look at that. that is a lot to paint, isn't it? That's Where a lot it? of structures oh and buildings. Today, for the first time ever, we've left the pods behind, with our finalists positioned on the rear terrace of the Royal Opera House, overlooking Covent Garden. Their reward is an overcast urban view of extreme complexity, as the bustling piazza below gives way to an intricate tapestry of rooftops, structures and architectural styles, stretching all the way up to the City of London skyline. And that's not all our artists need to contend with today. With sunset in just a couple of hours, the final stages of the contest will take place in the dark. Plein air artists, they might not normally start in the middle of the day and finish at night time, but it wouldn't be the final if we didn't give them something hard to wrestle with. I actually think it's a really difficult scene that we've given them. And the real challenge for them, I think, is to understand what inspires them now and how that might change over the course of the day and the evening. I don't know how I'm going to tackle the changing light, to be honest. I don't know if I should start with a day scene and then turn it into a night scene as it goes on, or like do a 50-50. I'm just going to see how it goes, I think. The view today is very busy. It's very challenging. It needs a lot of editing. The light's going to change and the tones will change. It's quite daunting. So far, I'm trying to imagine the night composition, where the light's going to come from. It's a bit overwhelming, so out of our comfort zones, for sure. Ah. 
As it's the final, before the competition starts, the artists are given the chance to leave their lofty vantage point for a closer look at the scene they'll be painting. Here we go. It's very different down here. There's a lot more people, it's a lot busier. I'm really interested in the glass roof of Covent Garden itself. Obviously, it's a bit like a skeleton, like I can see how it works inside, so maybe that'll help with the perspective above. So we're outside the London Transport Museum. I'm a bit close up to be able to get an accurate perspective, but I'm getting the gist of these beautiful archways and I'll definitely be adding them to my composition. Coming down to this level, everything is a completely different angle. And I was planning on not putting any sky in the painting. So when you come down to this level, it's really hard to not get sky. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Artists, I hope you have everything you need to raise the roof tonight. You have four hours to complete your final masterpieces and your time starts now. Confronted with such an overwhelming city scene, our artists need to set their compositions quickly. But for Denise, that's easier said than done. Compared to what I normally paint, this couldn't be more different. My style is quite organic and I liked the grasses and textures of the landscape. There isn't any grass here, so my job today is try and make it feel organic, but still a landscape of buildings. Denise Fisk secured her place in the competition with an expressive painting of Ashdown Forest and on a sunny day at Hever Castle, enthralled the judges with her loose brush marks and distinctive colour palette. It's like you stumble across it on the end of a long, wintry walk. It's strangely timeless. By the water at Buckler's Hard, she managed to imbue her painting with a similar atmosphere, earning her a place in the final today. Through her language and through what she chooses to leave out, she's able to take today's scene and make it mythical. And Denise is already starting to find elements in this evening's urban view that speak to her style. So, Denise, you're yeah. focusing mainly on this, which is incredible. It's almost abstracted, this form, the yes, way it changes yes. So, for constantly. me, it's giving me a curve. Yeah. And it's quite nice that I can try and find curves. I've got oh, the curves of the archways and the dome and that glazed courtyard. You've taken so, some license with that, haven't you? So I you've have. bent it to your will I a little have. bit more. Yes, I'm not doing straight architectural drawing. Okay. I need to make this more organic, more mine. So are you thinking that shape is more important at this stage of the day yes. because the light's going to change? Are you sort yeah, of...? It, I think my composition will make this a successful painting. My, the process after that will add to it, but yeah. the composition's got to be right. Well, look, I love the bones of what you've got. you just got to scale it up now onto your board. Yes. <laughs> I'd really like to achieve the scale of where we are. I don't think you often get to see too much of like London from above, but close enough to see all the details. So I think that's really interesting. See how much of it makes it onto the page. Using a mix of printmaking, paint and pencil to build up her work in layers, Christina Chan's submission was a view of the Australian bush after a fire. On the Scottish coast, she captivated the judges with her evocative rendering of Dinotta Castle. She's taken this kind of ghostly, faint thing that we saw earlier on and brought it more to life, but not lost any of its soul. At Buckler's Hard, printmaker Christina's unique visual language and approach again impressed the judges, securing her a spot in the final. This tentative 
way of feeling her way into the landscape. It matches something as historical as this, I think, perfectly. With this evening's view, Christina is determined to jump straight in. Christina, welcome to the Royal Opera House. I can see you're sketching everything out. So you've made these little windows. They all so far have the rooftops in them. I've got to embrace it. I'm going to go head first into the rooftops. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to anticipate what it's going to look like at night, so where the light's going to come from. And I just really want to get something quite illuminated. Hopefully, it's going to come through the roofs and then also with the eye. So actually, you're talking about quite a vast expanse of landscape. Yeah, the challenge is exactly, you know, what to keep in, what to edit out, if it's realistic. <laughs> yeah, good. Well, just go with what you feel. Love it. <laughs> While Christina takes on the whole of the West End skyline, our final artist has decided on a more focused approach. I probably won't get any of the street and I probably won't get any of the sky. I'm just going to do a really tight crop and get windows and ledges rather than too big and then get overwhelmed and start crying. <laughs> Monica Popham entered the competition with a depiction of a window in her native Gibraltar and won her heat with another striking, tightly cropped work of the Port of Liverpool building's main rotunda. I love the way Monica uses colour. I love her eye. You know, she's just zoomed right on up there. In the semi-final, Monica kept her signature rich colour palette and shadows, but took on a wider composition and convinced the judges to place her in their top three. The way the sun illuminates that clump of trees in the midground, you know, he's an artist who knows what they're doing. For today's final landscape, Monica is again hoping a wider crop will see her through. Monica is the final. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have thought it? Uh, who, who would have thought it? Yeah. And now, the first thing I did when I saw this view was like, it's a lot of windows. What are you going to do with all these windows? Are you focusing um, on one? Because we've seen you do that before, and you zoom in on one window. It can be really hard, because if you do one window really detailed, you get bogged down with all of them. So I've gone for a slice of the landscape. So I've got rid of the sky and got rid of the pavement. But I've cropped a lot in, so it's not really a crop, is it? No, there's <laughs> still a, I mean, from what you've got there, that's a huge amount of detail. Yeah. So. I better let you get on with it. Thank you. <laughs> I feel a bit like the chimney sweeps and Mary Poppins <laughs> might start dancing any minute over the rooftops. I know. I definitely feel like I've been transported back in time. Sadly, none of our artists have actually picked up on the Mary Poppins theme yet. No, but you know what? I think they're wrestling yeah. architectural detail and they're all making really tough decisions. They've got to work out what to get rid of yeah. and how to tell a great story. I'm really excited that Monica's giving us that sort of whole view. She isn't just finding a tiny detail on one side. I'm really pleased because we need to see that range. Exactly, yeah. And I think it's going to be interesting actually today to understand how Christina can respond to this, knowing that she loves everything to be quite loose and ghostly. Denise, I'm slightly surprised by her composition given that it's so busy. The initial drawing's an awful lot there and she's usually reduced everything right down. But know. you know, of course, the big challenge today is that we're moving from late afternoon into nighttime and of course the electric lights will come on and that's going to change everything. I mean, they're really beginning one picture and they're going to end up with a totally different scene. And I just hope that we haven't set them too big a challenge. This is a little bit tough. With an hour gone and the early evening sun finally starting to break through, our finalists are alighting on their final compositions. I think the biggest challenge will definitely be the scale, what to fit in the scene. I think I'll just have to try and keep a level head and go with my gut. The thing that could go wrong is definitely the perspective, because you've got a curved building, you've got the triangle, you've got lots of straight lines, so it's just trying to get that right. I can't believe we've had an hour already and I've only just started painting. It's a complicated scene and I really want to capture it all. I'm committed to it and I'll just do my best with it. From the terrace of London's Royal Opera House, 
three artists are bringing their areas of expertise to bear on the view across Covent Garden's rooftops. And with the evening sun due to set in just over an hour, it's crucial they choose the right moment to fix the light in their work. Monica, your work so much lives off these contrasts, and we're seeing that again here. How do you find what makes it interesting for you? Um, I always come back to the light. I mean, look, just now we get the lovely shadows, so... All those lovely shadows caused by the sun, which apparently sets every night. Yes. Um, so what happens to them? Um, I don't know, I haven't got there yet. <laughs> <laughs> just live in the moment. <laughs> Living in the moment, yeah. And if it keeps changing, then I'll just keep changing with it. But yeah. just trying to get the highlights down. If you'd brought your unicycle, we might make some money this afternoon. It's a place where people come for a bit of a spectacle. And our artists have been given this spectacle. Yes, I mean, they can paint anything they like, <laughs> as long as it's a window or a roof. <laughs> it's, it's a the... pretty tricky setup, isn't it? I mean, you've got the piazza itself, and it's busy and bustly, and, but then you lift your eyes a bit, and it's just this mass of roofs and architecture from the 18th okay. century right that... up to now. Okay. I'm getting dizzy <laughs> just thinking about it. Yes, it's making me feel very uncomfortable. So, yes, a lot for the artists that edit out, of course. And then we've got the added issue of time and light. I know you look at me. What a horrible thing to do. But yeah. it is the final, so I'm hoping that they'll be able to do something with what we've given them. Because of the artists we've had on this competition, I think these three are the best equipped to deal with that kind of narrative. Right, come on then, I'll get me banjo, you get unicycle, let's go make some money. Uh, like me on the unicycle. What about the other You're way around? You're on the unicycle, <laughs> I'll accompany you. I've done a quick sketch of the composition. Now I'm mapping it out onto my little bit of acetate so that when I do my layers, I'll know where everything's going. Responding to the light hitting the rooftops as sunset approaches, Christina is preparing to print her first layer of colour. Should we see Let's it? see what's going on. Yeah. I mean, it's a beautiful tone and it's really nice to feel the mood start to come through. But can you tell me why you've gone with the yellow as a base colour here? So just a few moments ago, the sun really came out of the clouds and backlit the piazza. Is that your no, but it's... interpretation, this is the sun, this is the yellow of the sun. No, it's a warmth. It's warmth. a first layer. So the colour, in a way, is about mood, but also tonal warmth. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Denise, this looks like the south of France. It's very sunny. We're looking <laughs> down at some boulevard, and you're seeing these colours. I'm picking out my favourite colours, yeah. The lights come out and all the colours that I could see but faintly have all been brought to life. So I'm really going to concentrate on capturing them all now. To add to the complexity, of course, the afternoon sun is setting. Yes. Soon it will be dusk and then you'll have an hour yes. of darkness. Can you sort of envision what it's going to look like a bit? I think when the lights illuminate, especially say, through these green glass rooftops here, I mean, it could be really luminous and beautiful, and I will want I to I like your positivity. That. I, thought was, I thought you were going to say, it could be really difficult, well, it, dark yeah. and... No, yes. but it's all difficult. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Today, a bustling tourist attraction, Covent Garden's 13th century origins are rather more sedate. Its name comes from what was once a convent garden used by the monks of Westminster Abbey. It wasn't until 1630 that Francis Russell, 4th Earl of Bedford, commissioned renowned architect Inigo Jones to design London's first fashionable square on the site, Italianate Covent Garden Piazza. Quickly becoming a centre of both commerce and entertainment, two theatres, both named the Theatre Royal, were built on the piazza before construction began on the Royal Opera House in the mid-19th century. 
theatres that dated back to the 1700s were lit by gaslight and many suffered fires. And unfortunately, that meant there were two buildings lost. We're in the third one, dated from 1858. And touch wood, uh, it is still here. Originally used solely for opera, after World War II, the theatre also became home to the Royal Ballet. Today, it's one of the world's most celebrated venues and a stage for globally fated names in classical music and dance. We operate in something called repertoire, and that can mean that there is up to six different operas and ballets in circulation. So tonight might be a performance of Swan Lake, and tomorrow might be Carmen. So we go from opera to ballet, we in different titles. One could say that the Royal Opera House and Covent Garden are almost inseparable. Out in the piazza, there are lots of buskers who are singing opera. So I think the two, you know, really sort of work together. The Royal Opera House and Covent Garden, historic spaces welcoming performers, visitors, and for the first time, three Landscape Artist of the Year finalists. Back on the terrace with two hours gone and the sun dipping ever lower, the tenor of the evening is becoming increasingly fraught. I think a lot could go wrong. The light changes every 10 minutes. But I think the night is an opportunity to have colors you wouldn't normally have. So I'm going to do a few more layers, then maybe paint, maybe draw. The things I worry about are the balance between overworking and underworking. If I overwork it, it'll suddenly become boring and a bit academic. I want to keep that slight mystery. Right now, I'm just blocking in the colors and trying to get the right color palette. Feeling the pressure of the changing light, the final, the uh, hour two, and I'm way behind schedule, so no stress. <laughs> Overlooking Covent Garden from the terrace of the Royal Opera House, three artists, Monica, Denise and Christina, are halfway through creating their final landscapes. But with London glittering in the sunset, will there be tears before bedtime? Would you like me to cry? <laughs> I haven't finished the strong, bold colours. I need to work on fitting all that area in. I would have expected to be a little bit further on than this, so I am on catch-up. I moved to the table because the light was setting behind and it was making it really hard to see what the colours were. And I've still got to get all the detail in, so I'm feeling really stressed, actually. <laughs> I'm really aware of the time because it is the final. I've done about four or five layers of printing. Then I blended it a bit with some paint and now I'm putting detail back with pencil. The atmosphere is getting more lively. Maybe the painting will too. As Covent Garden fills with revelers and the sun dips below the London skyline, at the halfway point, what light can the judges shed on the contest so far? So our artists are toiling away. The Royal Opera House stage is full of Australian ballet dancers. <laughs> and the Covent Garden nightlife is cranking up. Yeah. It's quite a lot going on, isn't there, around there? <laughs> There's an awful lot going on. I feel really sober. We have thrown everything at them. I mean, there's a sea of architectures. There's noise, there's action, there's people everywhere. And the final witching hour hasn't happened. And that's going to be interesting to see what happens once the light goes whether they stay with what they've got or they start adapting, yeah. Christina's paintings always look good from early on, don't they? They're always sort of whole and intriguing. It's very ethereal and it's very beautiful, and I think it's fantastic that Christina has actually sort of embraced this scene that we've given her tonight. And she is anticipating the nighttime tones coming in, and she's got that lovely yellow that is sort of infecting more and more space. I love the way she puts the material down. I think it's beautiful. I don't quite know where it's going to go, but it'd be a pity to lose what she's got. 
But I look at Denise as she works, and I just feel she has the most to do. Is that unfair? No, I think you're absolutely right. I think Denise has been very ambitious this evening. She's taken on the architecture in yeah. front of her, but she's got beautiful tension with the curve of the buildings that takes you into this vertical landscape. She's really transporting me to a different time and place. It's sort of like Victorian Covent Garden. I just hope she's got enough time to further express that because she is really packed it in. And so many of her other pictures sort of lived off their breathing space. If she can pull it off, it's going to be incredible, but it's an awful lot to do. Monica is giving us a lovely Monica painting. Mm. The colours, she just has an eye for colour, doesn't she? She just revels in it. I think one of the best things that she's done, actually, is sort of project us right forward, fly us over the rooftop. And I think by, by sort of throwing us forward like that, she's going to give us a very condensed scene. She should have that kind of very strange tension that I love in her work. I'm worried for Monica. I saw the scene today and I thought, this is made for Monica. She'll find something to zoom in on. And she has, but at the moment it's very difficult to see it as a whole because she does work sort of piecemeal across it. But the colour sense is beautiful and the way she puts paint down is also stunning. So hopefully she'll get it together. We've also got, of course, the commissions when we get to see what they can do in their own time. I mean, the commissions can change everything, like in an instant. Yeah. You see something in the artist that you haven't had the opportunity to see before and they just blow you away and you go, there's the winner. Well, we're really at the sharp end of this now. 2,000 applicants, three artists left standing. It'll be interesting to see which of them can handle the pressure. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> For the commissions, each of our finalists was asked to create a landscape depicting where they live or work, to show what they can do away from the pressure of a four-hour competition. In South London, Christina has chosen to find inspiration around her Kennington studio. I've decided to draw and create a scene outside my studio window, which is where these two foxes live. So this is the view of the fox's den on the roof. I think I've scared them off today, because they're not out. But luckily, over the last two years, I've taken loads and loads of photos of the fox's plane. I'm drawn to the foliage and the really bizarre angles in this view. I might see if I can play with the window frame for this composition. I like this kind of division between the foxes and myself. In Guildford, Monica has chosen to portray the street that she lives on with her partner, Jack. We moved over from Gibraltar four months ago, so it's been quite a bit of a whirlwind. If you walk up the street, you're on a hill, which has a really beautiful view of all the houses, which fascinates me because in Gibraltar is like high rise buildings and apartments. I'm trying to get the right balance of sky and road. I want the houses to be like the main feature. I'd love to get the whole shot of the levels, the way it all goes up. In East Sussex, Denise is staying even closer to home. I've chosen to paint my garden because it's really important space to me and my family. My garden also is like a diary of time and all of the plants have either been given to me by friends or family. The photos I'm taking now are really for the shapes of the leaves. The light's really flooding through today and I'm picking up the beautiful, strong contrast of shadows. As well as taking photographs, all three artists have decided to make some initial sketches to help them decide on composition. I'm sketching the road and trying to get all the roofs and all the windows in, and there's quite a few. <laughs> I think the important thing will be to find the perspective. The debate I'm having in my head to keep the windowsill in or not is if it's out, I think the scene could look too kind of wild and I really want it to come across as these foxes on a roof from my studio. My final piece is going to include the whole of the garden and the lawn and this study will inform just one tiny area. I do the studies here and then I take these into the studio and use them for the shapes. The challenge here will be the foxes 
It'll mean coming into the studio really early and staying late to get the best poses. I'm excited to get downstairs into the workshop area, size it all up for the press so I can start drawing. I want the final piece to get that light, really, and to get that atmosphere. I don't want it to just look like another boring English street. I just want to get some paint on that canvas now. It means a lot to me that I do a good piece of work, and that's always daunting, but I always do really enjoy the challenge. The three finalists have a week to complete their landscapes, which will be revealed to the judges at the end of today's competition. Back in Covent Garden, night has fallen, and the artists are moving into uncharted territory. Do they stick with what they have, or twist to reflect the new scene before them? Monica, it's uh, pitch black out there. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a sunny glow in your painting. Yeah, I'm trying to get that glow that we had earlier. I would love to paint the night, but I think it was too little too late. <laughs> Are you happy with the way it's gone? I mean, is it doing uh, yeah. what you wanted it to do? I'm, yeah, it is. I'm getting the, you know, the, all the different angles that I wanted. It's just having the time yeah. to complete I it to the stand that I wanted it to. Do you ever step back and... Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah I just see it. you and I worry I because, it, <laughs> because it is working, you know, yeah. it is working. Christina, obviously it's dark now, and you started in light, and everyone's got the same issue. I mean, it's sort of dusk, isn't it? That I, is it what you've got here at the moment? I'm or... aiming for dusk. Yeah. I think the key is not to darken too much, which is obviously yeah. the temptation. It's now taking steps back, figuring out what really needs to be tightened, what needs to be left. Yeah. Yeah. But you've not got bogged down in windows, have you? Do you know, I've actually managed to omit windows. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. The moon's out. The moon's looking very sexy. That looks amazing, <laughs> doesn't it? But your picture doesn't feel like a nighttime scene. The view now is a completely different painting, so I think it's more about finishing this painting mm -hmm. for as it is. Yeah. I think I've got down all the colour in the right places, as it were, mm -hmm. but the painting just needs to come together with some really lovely detail and fine work. It's now got to read better and right. um, have more of a story. So, there, yeah, there's the list. Do you feel confident you can get it done? When the time's up, the time's You're up. You're going to use every second <laughs> yeah, I get the sense. Absolutely. As the contest enters its fourth and final hour, that time is rapidly running out. Still lots to do. Just a lot of colour, there are a lot of elements. I think there always is a possibility of having put too much detail in. It's a fine balance, but uh, I think it's all right. So I've got a lot to do. I've got to get all the detail in and get the shadows right, otherwise the piece kind of gets a bit lost. I think this is the most stressed I've been all day. There's lots of undoneness that it still needs all completely bringing together. It'd be nice to have another five hours. <laughs> In Covent Garden, on the terrace of the Royal Opera House, this year's search for the country's Landscape Artist of the Year is into its final act. But which of our three artists, Denise, Christina or Monica, will end on a high note? It's so intensively architectural. Yeah, I wish I had more time to get the detail right, but I think I've got the whole atmosphere of the painting. It feels warmer there than it is here, I have to say. <laughs> Yeah, I've got that afternoon light, so um, hopefully you get some warmth from it. Well, it's got a lovely glow. <laughs> What's left to be done? I just want to define a little bit more, so I'm just going to put a few more darks in, and I think I'll have run out of time there. Then. OK. Are you naturally a night person? Uh, no, I never paint after oh, eight-ish. What would you <laughs> be doing I'm... at this time of night normally? Um, oh. Maybe um, I don't. Maybe yeah, that's a really <laughs> personal question. Christina, what's left to do? 
some final lines, mm -hmm. some final bits of detail to bring it out. OK. How are the energy levels? The energy levels are good. It's amazing what pure adrenaline will do. <laughs> yeah, and caffeine, I'm hoping. Artists, keep calm and carry on. You have five minutes left. It is just bringing it together with detail, so it will look more coherent, I hope. I was probably a little bit too ambitious. But I don't have a choice. I am going to get it done, yes. <laughs> I'm not sure I'll be tempted to do any roof scenes after this. Maybe to practice. <laughs> Artists, your time is up. Please put down your equipment and step away from your easels. I'm very tired, but really had a good day. It's been really good fun. It's been, been brilliant memories. I was really calm at the beginning, and then as the hours went on, the panic settled in. <laughs> you want the hug? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> I'm exhausted. I think at one point I was shaking. I don't know if it was cold, if I was nervous, but there was definite shaking. While our artists calm their nerves, for the judges, there's no let up. It's time to reveal the three commission artworks. Well, let's have a look. <gasps> wow. Oh, my goodness. I mean, this is extraordinary. Christina's, I mean, is like a fairy tale. And also very different in feel from actually what we've seen. I see, I see it's related, mm. but the mark making is different. That fusion of soft and drawing works really well here. Mm. And then the way the, are they foxes or wolves are sort of appearing or disappearing under this canopy of trees. So very yeah. strange sense of space you get there. And I love the texture. I mean, I don't really understand the specifics of this mm. landscape, but I find it completely compelling. I loved being able to get back into the studio with the presses and just show the judges what I could do. I don't know if I've done enough. I've definitely done my best. I think, you know, Denise, she's always finding a way through, and we've got it here into the end. Mm. What is this, her garden? Yes, it could be mm. some strange forest in the Caribbean, but then you see the trellis on the right-hand side, yeah. and you're yes. brought right back <laughs> yes. to, you know, an English garden. Well, obviously, her natural inclination is towards the organic. Mm. And you can see the sort of invention and the mark-making the freedom she has when she deals with the purely organic. With the commission, I was aiming to really convey my joy in the garden, that it's a, a happy place. And yeah, I had a lovely time painting. And Monica's just taken us to the heart of British suburbia, hasn't she? I mean, this feels so quintessentially English. I mean, that's got to be the most accomplished shadow in the history of landscape <laughs> artists of the year. She's so good with light and contrast. It's a total love letter to these windows, but it's the, the introduction of this shadow that gives the whole thing this heft and tension, and it makes it just a very dramatic work. The main aim of the commission was to get the light and to show that I can do a large-scale work rather than just like a really small cropped piece. So, yeah, I'm happy with it. As midnight approaches, the judge's final task is to view the commissions alongside today's three landscapes. Well, to the paintings produced today, we've added the commissions, and we have three very different artists. <laughs> yeah. well, it's like a very successful exhibition, isn't it? Like You really get the sense that there are three different individuals who come at the world with their own language, and that's really thrilling for us. Denise's original submission and her commission today are both nature. Mm. She, that's what she's clearly interested in. Yeah. So she was thrown a curveball. Yeah, she's really had to confront, you know, an urban landscape 
and she gives us lots of pause in something which was densely populated with structure. And I think the thing that really comes to play today is what a great colorist she is. And I think that's what unites these two works for me, which actually feel quite different. When I look at these side by side, I realize that what she loves about the natural environment is the chaos. Here in Covent Garden today, it's all about formality and order and precision. And she tried to hold it together by accentuating that curve in the bottom right-hand side. Monica, I mean, it, it's almost the same <laughs> setup as her commission, isn't it? Did she luck out? I wonder whether she did luck out. We know she has a great understanding of light, structure, and a nice way with colour. They're both brilliant. They both speak a lot about the oppressiveness of being in a city or in suburbia. I think what's really compelling is that we know that Monica's creating these scenes with this drama and this tension in a really purposeful way. Like, she understands narratives as a kind of menacing quality to the shadows. And it's gentler today, but it's still there. They're both beautifully executed and they both work. So let's talk about Christina's painting today. We've talked about Christina's work before as having this quality that it could come from a book illustration or that she transports us to these other worlds. The thing that I'm taken with is this, this particular kind of light coming through the landscape. It's really compelling. And I think looking at the commission allows me to understand what she's achieved today and in the other days we've seen her in a fuller way, I suppose. I realise looking at both of them, she looks to find and feel emotion. And you sense the emotion in the piece that she made today in the sky. So you've got to pick a winning artist. It's not a choice in a void. They are going on to do a very specific mm. commission, which is to paint Orkney for the Science Museum. So how will that impact on your decision? Ultimately, you know, we're looking for an artist who can tell a story. Mm. And what we have to decide is which one we think will be the most exciting, interesting fit. Tough decision. Christina, Denise, Monica, thank you for all your hard work this summer. We've really enjoyed watching your progress through the competition. You're all hugely talented artists, but the judges have made their final decision. The winner of Landscape Artist of the Year is... Monica Popper. I don't know. You tell me what just happened. <laughs> Honestly, I'm genuinely so shocked. I started this whole thing, I, I entered it, and I was like, you know, just love the programme, would love to be on it. And this today, yeah, magic. <laughs> I feel all right. I don't feel destroyed. <laughs> I think it was a really amazing night, and I love the way Monica rendered the light on the buildings. I'm not disappointed. I've just loved it. It's just all been fabulous. I've learned so much about my own process that I would be able to take that forward and hopefully grow stronger and stronger. I think what was really exciting about Monica is that she can take something and say, here it is, and I'm giving it back to you, but I'm giving it this very subtle shift in energy. Mm. So it never feels literal, it never feels plainly descriptive. Mm. There's just this fantastic energy and tension. But she's also a brilliant colorist and a brilliant yeah. painter. I'm hoping this sort of strange Orkney experiment and that weird sort of hybrid of nature and science will sort of, you know, inspire her. And, you know, this is a subject, you know, climate change and energy, it, it, it really matters. And I just hope that she takes a lot from winning today yeah. and has the confidence to be as thoughtful as she was with that commission. It's kind of thrilling, isn't it, to think that this winner's 25, very, very beginning of their career, and they've got their first museum commission. I feel really thrilled for her. Probably can't wait to tell She was said she was going to wait up with a phone beside her bed, so uh, it'd be nice to give her a call. <laughs> Winning is just so validating that what I've spent so much time working on, trying to balance a full-time job and art on the side, and it just means that I'm going in the right direction. If you'd like to take part in next year's special 10th anniversary competition or find out more about the work of our artists, visit our website, 
skyartsartistoftheyear.tv. Next time, Monica travels to Orkney. It's a really, really stunning landscape. I can't get over how panoramic it is. To research her prize commission. We're farming the air, we're farming the sea, yeah. winds, waves. So that means we are basically living in the energy future. Oh, wow. That is a little bit creepy. Before its grand unveiling at the Science Museum. It feels like the first big step in my artistic career. Someone's definitely going to cry. It might be me. <laughs> I can't wait any longer. I'm nervous. Are you nervous? <laughs> I am. Shall we bite the bullet? Yeah, let's do let's it. Let's do it. Okay.